I think we will be concluding the Gospel of Barnabas, edited and translated from the Italian manuscript in the Imperial Library at Vienna by Lonsdale and Laura Rog, 1907, herein. 217. The soldiers took Judas and bound him, not without derision, for he truthfully denied that he was Jesus. And the soldiers mocking him said, Sir, fear not, for we are come to make thee king of Israel, and we have bound thee, because we know that thou dost refuse the kingdom. Judas answered, Now have ye lost your senses? Ye are come to take Jesus of Nazareth, with arms and lanterns, as, against this in brackets, a robber, and ye have bound me, that have guided you to make me king. Then the soldiers lost their patience, and with blows and kicks they began to flout Jesus, Judas, and they led him with fury into Jerusalem. You know, most of the counts I hear like this are about Jesus, so excuse me for the misspeak. John and Peter followed the soldiers afar off, and they affirmed to him who writeth that they saw all the examination that was made of Judas by the high priest and by the council of the Pharisees, who were assembled to put Jesus to death, whereupon Judas spake many words of madness, insomuch that everyone was filled with laughter, believing that he was really Jesus, and that, for fear of death, he was feigning madness, whereupon the scribes bound his eyes with a bandage, and mocking him said, Jesus, prophet of the Nazarenes, in parentheses, for so they called them who believe in Jesus. Tell us, who was it that smote thee? And they buffeted him and spat in his face. And when it was morning, there assembled the great council of scribes and elders of the people. And the high priest with the Pharisees sought false witness against Judas, believing him to be Jesus. And they found not that which they sought. And why say I that the chief priests believed Judas to be Jesus? Nay, all the disciples with him who writeth believed it. And more, the poor virgin mother of Jesus, with his kinsfolk and friends, believed it, insomuch that the sorrow of every one was incredible. As God liveth, he who writeth forgot all that Jesus had said, how that he should be taken up from the world, and that he should suffer in a third person, and that he should not die until near the end of the world. Wherefore he went with the mother of Jesus, and with John to the cross. The high priest caused Judas to be brought before him, bound, and asked him of his disciples and his doctrine. Whereupon Judas, as though beside himself, answered nothing to the point. The high priest then adjured him by the living God of Israel that he would tell him the truth. Judas answered, I have told you that I am Judas Iscariot, who promised to give into your hands Jesus the Nazarene, and ye, by what art, I know not, are beside yourselves, for ye will have it by every means that I am Jesus. The high priest answered, O perverse seducer, thou hast deceived all Israel, beginning from Galilee, even unto Jerusalem, here with thy doctrine and false miracles, and now thinkest thou to flee the merited punishment that befitteth thee by feigning to be mad. As God liveth, thou shalt not escape it. And having said this, he commanded his servants to smite him with buffettings and kicks, so that his understanding might come back into his head. The derision which he then suffered at the hands of the high priest's servants is past belief, for they zealously devised new inventions to give pleasure to the council. So they attired him as a juggler, and so treated him with hands and feet that it would have moved the very Canaanites to compassion if they had beheld that sight. But the chief priests and Pharisees and elders of the people had their hearts so exasperated against Jesus that, believing Judas to be really Jesus, they took delight in seeing him so treated. Afterwards, they led him bound 
to the governor, who secretly loved Jesus. Wherefore he, thinking that Judas was Jesus, made him enter into his chamber, and spake to him, asking him for what cause the chief priests and the people had given him into his hands. Judas answered, If I tell thee the truth, thou wilt not believe me, for perchance thou art deceived as the chief is in parentheses, priests and the Pharisees are deceived. The governor answered, thinking that he wished to speak concerning the law. Now knowest thou not that I am not a Jew, but the chief is in parentheses, and so is thinking that he wished to speak concerning the law. Priest and the elders of the people have given thee into my hand. Wherefore, tell us the truth, that I may do what is just. For I have power to set thee free and to put thee to death. Judas answered, Sir, believe me, if thou put me to death, thou shalt do a great wrong, for thou shalt slay an innocent person, seeing that I am Judas Iscariot, and not Jesus, who is a magician, and by his art hath so transformed me. When he heard this, the governor marveled greatly, so that he sought to set him at liberty. The governor, therefore, went out and smiling said, In the one case, at least, this man is not worthy of death, but rather of compassion. This man saith, said the governor, that he is not Jesus, but a certain Judas, who has guided the soldiery to take Jesus. And he saith that Jesus, the Galilean, hath by his art magic so transformed him. Wherefore, if this be true, it were a great wrong to kill him, seeing that he were innocent. But if he is Jesus and denieth that he is, assuredly he has lost his understanding, and it were impious to slay a madman. Then the chief priests and elders of the people, the scribes and Pharisees, cried out with shouts, saying, He is Jesus of Nazareth, for we know him. For if he were not the malefactor, we would not have given him into thy hands, nor is he mad, but rather malignant. For with his device he seeketh to escape from our hands, and the sedition that he would stir up if he should escape, which would be worse than the former. Pilate, in parentheses, for such was the governor's name, in order to rid himself of such a case, said, He is a Galilean, and Herod, is king of Galilee. Wherefore, it pertaineth not to me to judge such a case, so take him to Herod. Now, in the Bible, we find that there's four historical figures blended into the Jesus thing, so there's going to be some things that a person's going to recognize from this story from multiple generations being talked about, but Accordingly, they led Judas to Herod, who was, of a long time, had desired that Jesus should go to his house, because Herod was a Gentile and adored the false and lying gods, living after the manner of the unclean Gentiles. Now, see, Gentiles not think of ancestry. It's you've turned your back on God. You're worshiping other than God. You're atheist or whatever. Um, but obviously, he was an atheist. Um, it's hard to tell sometimes which word they meant, and some of these words are refer to multiple things, but the point is clear. They're not being guided by God, is the point. You know, because they're not accepting that guidance. Um, now when Judas had been led thither, Herod asked him of many things, to which Judas gave answers, not to the purpose, denying that he was Jesus. Then Herod mocked him with all his court, and caused him to be clad in white, as the fools are clad, and then sent him back to Pilate, saying to him, Do not fail in justice to the people of Israel. And this Herod wrote, because the chief priests and scribes and the Pharisees had given him a good quantity of money. The governor, having heard that this was so from a servant of Herod, in order that he might also gain some money, feigned that he desired to set Judas at liberty, whereupon he caused him to be scourged by his slaves, who were paid by the scribes to slay him under the scourges, 
But God, who had decreed the issue, reserved Judas for the cross, in order that he might suffer that horrible death to which he had sold another. He did not suffer Judas to die under the scourges, notwithstanding that the soldiers scourged him so grievously that his body rained blood. Does that Slayer song have any lyrics? Thereupon, in mockery, they clad him in an old purple garment, slang, uh, uh, saying, It is fitting to our new king to clothe him and crown him. And they gathered thorns and made a crown, like those of gold and precious stones which kings wear on their heads. And this crown of thorns they placed upon Judas's head, putting in his hand a reed for a scepter. And they made him sit in a high place. And the soldiers came before him, bowing down in mockery, saluting him as king of the Jews. And they held out their hands to receive gifts, such as new kings are accustomed to give. And receiving nothing, they smote Judas, saying, Now how art thou crowned, foolish king, that thou wilt not pay thy soldiers and servants? And people say foolish in terms of these, you know, if you got clothes that you don't want to stain because you work because uh, you work or something like, well, you still work. Um, but well, it's, it's nice to have nice clothes for a day, and then they get like everything else, right? Um, you know, because some people couldn't afford, uh, most people couldn't afford separate outfits back then. You know, uh, the chief priests with the scribes and Pharisees seeing that Judas died not by the scourges, and, fearing lest Pilate should set him at liberty, made a gift of money to the governor, who, having received it, gave Judas to the scribes and Pharisees as guilty unto death. Whereupon they condemned two robbers with him to the death of the cross. So they led him to Mount Calvary, Mount, Mount Calvary, where... They used to hang malefactors, and there they crucified him naked for the greater ignominy. Judas truly did nothing else but cry out, God, why hast thou forsaken me? Seeing the malefactor hath escaped, and I die unjustly. Verily I say that the voice, the face, and the person of Judas were so like to Jesus that his disciples and believers entirely believed that he was Jesus. Wherefore, some departed from the doctrine of Jesus, believing that Jesus had been a false prophet, and that, by art, magic, he had done the miracles, which he did. For Jesus had said that he should not die till near the end of the world, for that, at that time, he should be taken away from the world. But they that stood firm in the doctrine of Jesus were so encompassed with sorrow, seeing him die, who was entirely like to Jesus, that they remembered not what Jesus had said, and so in company with the mother of Jesus, they went to Mount Calvary, and were not only present at the death of Judas, weeping continually, but by means of Nicodemus and Joseph of Abarimathea, they obtained from the governor the body of Judas to bury it. Whereupon they took him down from the cross with such weeping as assuredly no one would believe and buried him in the new sepulcher of Joseph having wrapped him up in an hundred pounds of precious ointments. And Ea probably Yah ending Upper in math. Yeah, I'm not trying I'm trying to figure out what that might mean. Um Heal from death of God, maybe? Uh, no, that's not it. Um Jesus crucified, two hundred eighteen. Then returned each man to his house. He who rideth with John and James his brother went with the mother of Jesus to Nazareth, 
Those disciples who did not fear God went by night and, in brackets, stole the body of Jesus of Judas and hid it, spreading report that Jesus was risen again. Whence great confusion arose. The high priest then commanded, under pain of anathema, that no one should talk of Jesus of Nazareth. And so there arose a great persecution, and many were stoned, and many beaten, and many banished from the land, because they could not hold their peace on such a matter. The news reached Nazareth, how that Jesus, their fellow citizen, having died on the cross, was risen again, whereupon he that writeth prayed the mother of Jesus, that she would be pleased to leave off weeping, because her son was risen again. Hearing this, the Virgin Mary, weeping, said, Let us go to Jerusalem to find my son. I shall die content, uh, content probably, when I have seen him. And this sort of thing has uh, happened in various ways, too. You had people that they thought they stoned to death or something that actually survived and ended up uh, healing themselves a little bit, or others healed them, and people act like they were raised from the dead. Other people just weren't, you know, just thought dead, and, you know, their bodies pop up as they're burying them or something. Um, I think one guy a few years back was buried for a month. They didn't cremate him or chemically treat him or anything, and he just, he, he got himself out of the ground, the wet ground. Um, but more often than not, I think probably people faked such things, that fakes that someone was alive, or just the way that people fake their deaths, which is even more common than that. Um, 219. The virgin returned to Jerusalem with him who writeth, and James and John on that day when the decree of the high priest went forth, whereupon the virgin who feared God, albeit she knew the decree of the high priest to be unjust, commanded those who dwelt with her to forget her son. Then how each one was affected. God who discerneth the heart of man, knoweth that between grief at the death of Judas, whom we believe to be Jesus our master, and the desire to see him risen again, we, with the mother of Jesus, were consumed. So the angels that were guardians of Mary ascended to the third heaven, where Jesus was in the company of angels, and recounted all to him. Wherefore Jesus prayed God that he would give him power to see his mother and his disciples. Then the merciful God commanded his four favorite angels, who were Gabriel, Michael, Raphael, and Uriel, to bear Jesus into his mother's house, and there keep watch over him for three days continually, suffering him only to be seen by them that believed in his doctrine. Jesus came, surrounded with splendor, to the room where abode Mary the Virgin with her two sisters, and Martha and Mary Magdalene and Lazarus, and him who writeth, and John and James and Peter, whereupon through fear they fell as dead. And Jesus lifted up his mother and the others from the ground, saying, Fear not, for I am Jesus, and weep not, for I am alive and not dead. They remained every one for a long time beside himself at the presence of Jesus, for they all together, believing that Jesus was dead. Then the virgin weeping said, Tell me, thy son, wherefore God, having given thee power to raise the dead, suffered thee to die, to the shame of thy kinsfolk and friends, and to the shame of thy doctrine, for every one that loveth thee hath been as dead. Now, isn't there a, a Shia narration that indicates that Jesus was, um, you know, he said eight names of God, and then he's wrapped by an angel or angels or something like that. I forget exactly how it goes. But think of those pentagram rites, and, you know, it's a cosmological, uh, you don't have to think of it as invoking the angels or evoking this or whatever. It's a statement of your belief in the uh, quadrants full of angels, basically, um, that they're, you know, that they're something that God has directed, because obviously you start off, Yahweh, 
aduni ah ya 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 or agla or whatever um I thought the bar lalam amen or some variation of that right um 220 Jesus replied embracing his mother believe me mother for verily I say to thee that I have not been dead at all for God hath reserved me till near the end of the world and having said this he prayed the four angels that they would manifest themselves and give testimony how the matter had passed thereupon the angels manifested themselves like four shining suns insomuch that through fear every one again fell down as dead then Jesus gave four linen cloths to the angels that they might cover themselves in order that they might be seen and heard to speak by his mother and her companions and having lifted up each one he comforted them saying these are the ministers of god gabriel who announceth god's secrets michael who fighteth against god's enemies you know elsewhere it said he's over hell right um raphael who receiveth the souls of them that die and uriel who will call everyone the judgment of god at the last day then the four angels narrated to the virgin how god had sent for jesus and had transformed judas that he might suffer the punishment to which he had sold another the light of god is the one does that mean there's we're going to be called by some event coming in from outside our planet stars and asteroids and whatever um could be right then said he who writeth O master is it lawful for me to question thee now as it was lawful for me when thou dwellest with us jesus answered ask what thou pleasest barnabas and i will answer thee then said he who writeth O master seeing that god is merciful wherefore he hath so tormented us making us to believe that thou wert dead and thy mother hath so wept for thee that she hath been nigh to death and thou who art and holy one of god on thee hath god suffered to fall the calumny that thou wert slain amongst robbers on the mount calvary and the jews acted like if you know you couldn't kill a prophet right you know so they, they you know um so they acted like that was proof against them that oh you know some of them were killed um but even their own book is left in some of that well weren't there prophets that were killed um jesus answered believe me barnabas that every sin however small it be god punisheth with great punishment seeing that god is offended at sin wherefore since my mother and my faithful disciples that were with me love me a little with earthly love the righteous god hath willed to punish this love with the present grief in order that it may not be punished in the flames of hell and though i have been innocent in the world since men have called me god and son of god god in order that i be not mocked of the demons on the day of judgment hath willed that i be mocked of men in this world by the death of judas making all men to believe that i died upon the cross and this mocking shall continue into the advent of muhammad the messenger of god who when he shall come shall reveal his deception you know the devil's deception this deception to those who believe in god's law i misspoke a little bit but you know it, you know so the devil's mocking and coming with this doctrine and but we found elsewhere was it earlier in this program or in another program this idea that um there was going to come a messenger that was going to undo this false doctrine that others had said it wasn't to conflict with jesus or anything like that it wasn't you know that jesus or this messenger were going to be deceptive it was the other people's deception that was being lifted shall reveal this deception you know shall point out that this was a deception to those who believe in god's law um i'm trying to turn the page here excuse me um 
hearing thus spoken, Jesus said, Thou art just, O Lord, our God, because to thee only belongeth glory and honor without end. 221. And Jesus turned himself to him who wrote it, and said, See, Barnabas, that by all means thou write my gospel concerning all that hath happened through my dwelling in the world, and write in like manner that which hath befallen Judas, in order that the faithful may be undeceived, and every one may believe the truth. Then answered he who writeth, All will I do, if God will, O Master. But how it happened unto Judas I know not, for I saw not all. Jesus answered, Here are John and Peter, who have seen all, and they will tell you all that has passed. And Jesus commanded us to call his faithful disciples, that they might see him. Then did James and John, you know, there are no J names, so it was uh, Yahya and Yaqub and, you know, um, call together the seven disciples with Nicodemus and Joseph and many others of the seventy-two and the eighth Jesus. The third day, Jesus said, Go to the Mount of Olives with my mother, for there I will ascend again unto heaven, and ye will see who shall bear me up. And so went all there, saving twenty-five of the seventy-two disciples, who for fear had fled to Damascus. So why 46? And as they all stood in prayer, at midday came Jesus with a great multitude of angels who were praising God, and the splendor of his face made them sore afraid, and they fell with their faces to the ground. But Jesus lifted them up, comforting them, and saying, Be not afraid, I am your master. And he reproved many, who believed him to have died, and risen again, saying, Do ye then hold me and God for liars? For God hath granted to me to live almost unto the end of the world, even as I said unto you. Verily I say unto you, I died not, but Judas the traitor. Beware, for Satan will make every effort to deceive you. But be ye my witnesses in all Israel, and throughout the world of all things that ye have heard and seen. And having thus spoken, he prayed God for the salvation of the faithful and the conversation of the sinners, uh, and the conversion of the sinners. And his prayer ended, he embraced his mother, saying, Peace be unto thee, my mother, and rest thou in God, who created thee and me. And having thus spoken, he turned to his disciples, saying, May God's grace and mercy be with you. And before their eyes, the four angels carried him up into heaven. Before me, Gabriel, be behind me, Raphael, to my left hand, Mikael, to my right hand, Uriel, or, you know, you, you can actually mix up the order of those, it's, you know, there's some variation, and I think you can actually use all variations with that, but, um, but see, the intercession is, you know, asking for that good influence, that ignorance be alleviated, that the evil be alleviated, so not, not uh, but not in the way that, you know, people are ignorant of evil and, you know, oh, just the right person prayed for you. No, 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 no. That they become enlightened. That they become righteous. You know. Or that they're merited for as far as they are on good and true. 222. After Jesus had departed, the disciples scattered through the different parts of Israel and of the world. And the truth, hated as Satan, was persecuted as it always is by falsehood, for certain evil men, pretending to be disciples, preached that Jesus died and rose not again. Others preached that he really died but rose again. Others preached and yet preach that Jesus is the Son of God, among whom is Paul deceived. 
But we, as much as I have written, that preach we to those who fear God, that they may be saved in the last day of God's judgment. Amen. This is the end of the gospel. And um, remember this story, uh, you know, shall reveal this deception to those. Yeah, that, that the way that's phrased just that doesn't sound right until you think about it. But, you know, um, shall expose the deception is probably the be a better way to put that. But because um, people certainly reveal of the lie, you know, the druge, the Zoroastrian, you know, the evil side is called the lie. Um, so yeah, there, there's there's that thing. But what happened with Paul? So he was a person. He was one of the persecutors, according to the Bible. He fell, and he was blind for a few days, and he heard, uh, he's, you know, you know, why persecutest thou me? It's probably somebody who uh, he was persecuting, right? He's chasing people around to hurt them and kill them or uh, whatever. And so he falls and goes blind for a few days, which is not a reliable time as, as a witness that you're just, you know, that out of it for for days on end. Um, but he was supposed to go to somebody's house and learn. So if he thought that this was Jesus, and he thought that this was some, uh, some sign that maybe Jesus was a lot more than he thought uh, and even more than they were saying, that he could have invented Christianity out of that. No, 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 no problem in his... Um, and, and you certainly find um, throughout the other part of the Bible, the, the Acts and all that other stuff, uh, the outside of the canonical Gospels, you have this idea that it's not really revelation, it's not really inspiration, it's more philosophy. Well, I mean, you know, that's a conclusion that you can draw.